Now, I don't know about you, but if you're like me, you sit at your computer all day, doing work or school or what have you, for so long that by the time you look up from the bright glow box on the desk, you have to blink a few times to ensure that your eyes are working properly, like the scene from Spider-Man 1. And when you finally do stand up, your back and limbs make this awful cracking sound like a young child ringing out a wall of bubble wrap. This is the beautiful sound of the bones going back to where they need to be, because they weren't where they needed to be, because I wasn't sitting how I was supposed to be. And you're probably not sitting how you're supposed to be either. From an ergonomic point of view, we probably both get a failing grade. Ergonomics is a field of study relating to the fitting of systems to the human body. According to the International Ergonomics Association, quote, Ergonomics, or human factors, is a scientific discipline concerned with the understanding of interactions among humans and other elements of a system, and the profession that applies theory, principles, data, and methods to design in order to optimize human well-being and overall system performance, end quote. It is a field which attempts to fit the system to the person, rather than the person to the system. It is a field which has benefited greatly from global cultural flow, permeating into the technoscapes of every developed country as they realize its great potential. The profession of an ergonomics engineer is one which has been introduced into almost all economic fields, from agriculture, healthcare, manufacturing and distribution, to telecommunications and many governmental agencies. A specific group of professions which has greatly benefited from the introduction of ergonomic factors are those with office-type environments. According to a review by Mark Benden about the transition to ergonomic systems, quote, Today, office workers make up more than half of the workforce in many large cities. Initially, some of the occupational hazards we were concerned about for blue-collar workers, cumulative trauma, awkward postures, showed themselves in the injury and illness reports streaming out of the late 1980s and early 1990s, end quote. But despite this, many people in office-type environments don't realize the benefits which can be gained. Implementing ergonomic factors in the furniture and equipment of a desk space or office-type environment yields many benefits such as boosted productivity, increased focus and motivation, and prevention of structural damage to the body. A discussion of the benefits of ergonomic design in any environment must first begin with a discussion of what those ergonomic designs are. The concept of ergonomic design stems from a rebuttal of the one-size-fits-all mentality. Most everyone who uses a computer is aware of at least some of the issues related to having to cope with a standardized workstation. From the chair and the desk, to the office equipment that the user interacts with, all aspects of a worker's environment can be improved through good ergonomic design by fitting the system to the user rather than the other way around. So let's discuss what those designs are. When sitting in any chair, not just in an office environment, the main goal is to keep the spine straight throughout its entirety while not posing undue stress on the outer extremities. This is accomplished with a variety of design features in the height, seat, back, and armrests of the chair to ensure that proper posture is maintained with minimal effort on the user's part. Chair design starts from the ground and works its way upwards in an attempt to ensure that all joints are angled either straight or at 90 degrees. The height of the seat should be equal to the user's knee height so that when they sit down, the upper legs are horizontal while their feet are planted firmly on the floor. In some instances, the chair will not lower enough to accommodate the user, and in such cases, a footrest needs to be used to ensure that 90 degree angles are maintained throughout the hips and legs. The seat should be soft enough to hold the user comfortably without nerve pinching, but firm enough so that they will not sink into it, causing their posture to fall below the horizontal. Moving up to the backrest, there should be one. If you are forced to use your back muscles alone to maintain the upright position, it will cause undue strain and will actually cause more harm than benefit. The backrest should be positioned tight against the spine, ensuring that there is a protrusion near the base in the lumbar region, where the spine naturally curves away. Finally, the armrests should be positioned such that they hold the arms relaxed at a 90 degree angle. Any lower and the user will be supporting their arms on their own, causing undue strain. Any higher and the user will be forced to contort their wrists to reach the keyboard, or disregard the armrests entirely. One may notice that the entire design of a chair is reliant on the size and measurement of the user who will be sitting in it. With so many varying body types and sizes, standardization becomes difficult. This can be solved many different ways, but is most often solved with customizability. All office chairs and gaming chairs come with the ability to adjust their seat height. Some offer the customizability of the armrests and the backrests, and some high-end chairs allow for customized lumbar support and headrests. This allows all users to adjust the seat to the optimal position to support their body. And so, with spine aligned and outer extremities properly rested, attention turns to the desk. The ideal layout of a desk allows the user to handle all items upon it without having to reach or move out of their properly aligned seating position. 
This requires both a proper arrangement of items upon the desk, along with a well-designed desk itself. The desk height is perhaps the most important factor. While the user is seated in the chair, with their arms on the armrests, their hands should rest at exactly the same height of the desk. Unfortunately, this rarely happens, since even the act of adjusting the chair upwards is unsuitable since it would lift the user's legs further off the ground. In most cases, users will have to remove their arms from the armrests to reach anything on the desk, which negates the purpose of armrests altogether. But with adjustable desks, such a problem is fixed easily. In addition, the desk should have enough space underneath it for the user to comfortably fit their legs and feet without cramming. In this regard, almost no under-desk drawers are recommended, as the presence of one will often either press down on the legs or push up on the arms. And then comes the discussion of the layout of items on top of the desk. We will discuss the ergonomics of specific equipment later, but for now, it is important to note the three-zone approach to desk layouts. The area immediately in reach is zone 1, or the neutral reach zone, in which the most often used items should be placed, such as the keyboard or pen and paper, where items can be acquired with little to no movement of the arms. The second zone is the place in which items used less frequently are kept, such as a telephone, water bottle, sticky notes, and the like. This area is where the arms can reach without moving the spine from the back of the chair. The third zone, called the extended reach zone, is where infrequently used items should be kept, as reaching and grabbing would require the user to extend the arm, bend at the waist, and lean forward. Every once in a while is fine, but keeping often needed items in zone 3 can cause undue stress on the body, so keep the most used items in the closest zones, moving out until you have the most infrequently used items. Now of course, a discussion of desks cannot be concluded without addressing the famous and chic stand-up desk. These desks, as their name implies, allow the user to work while standing upright, instead of seated in a chair. Such desks are claimed to be better for the body than sitting all day. While research indicates that standing is preferable to sitting improperly, this is only true for short periods of time. Sitting properly is preferable to both. In fact, recent research indicates that standing with good posture for long periods of time is worse for the spine than sitting with poor posture for an equal amount of time. The optimal situation seems to be sitting in an ergonomically designed chair while standing or walking intermittently throughout the day, about every 20 minutes. This will keep the spine aligned without causing undue atrophy. So now let's discuss the office equipment actually upon the desk, the monitor, keyboard, and mouse. For a computer monitor, much like the desk, the most ergonomically important factor is the height, followed by the viewing angle. The height of the monitor should be such that, when the head is pointed toward the center of the screen, the eye line is between horizontal and 17 to 18 degrees below horizontal. This is often overlooked with screens being far lower than this recommended height, which causes the user to bend their neck down in order to view the screen. Holding this position for even short periods of time causes the muscles in the back of the neck to become overworked and quickly cause damage to the body. The use of tall screen stands or blocks upon which the screens rest goes a long way in the health of the user. A common question regarding the placement of the computer monitor is that of whether a laptop can reasonably accommodate these ergonomic requirements. For the most part, the answer is no. Due to the connection between the keyboard and the monitor, the screen angle causes a great amount of strain upon the user's neck as they are required to constantly look downwards to view its contents. For temporary users, such concerns can be waived for the practicality and convenience of portability, but for long-term and full-time users, it is recommended to prop the laptop up to a proper monitor height and utilize an external mouse and keyboard whenever possible. This allows the user to benefit from the properly positioned screen and input devices at the same time. In regards to input devices, there are many options available, such as trackballs and touchscreen styluses. But perhaps the most widely used input device pair is the keyboard and mouse. The flat design of a keyboard is almost ubiquitous, but as it turns out, such a design causes the wrists of the user to contort up to 25 degrees out of their natural holding position in order to hold their hands on the home row. Two easy solutions to this problem are split keyboards and contoured keyboards, both of which attempt to position the hands in alignment with their forearms, causing less strain to the wrists and finger muscles. As for the mouse, it is rarely well designed for human use, often no more than a lump that the hand must wrap around as best it can. Studies seem to indicate that computer users spend anywhere from one-third to two-thirds of their time using the mouse, and that simply clicking and dragging with a common, ill-fitting mouse causes fatigue in the whole arm and wrist area, which if prolonged, may be problematic. The issue seems to be twofold. First is the mouse's typical position in zone 2 rather than zone 1, as the keyboard often pushes the mouse out to the side. 
This causes the user to reach and either hold their arm aloft during use, or rest their arm on the sharp edge of the desk, causing either extended muscle fatigue or blunt trauma to the tissues, respectively. The second issue lies in the large size of the mouse, causing the user to flex their wrist upwards during its use. The solution lies in a mouse designed to fit the user's hand rather than a simple slab, and the positioning of the mouse closer to the body of the user. Increasing the sensitivity of the mouse may help to keep it from wandering too far out of zone 1. The user should ensure that both keyboard and mouse are within their comfortable working zone, and the sustained use of either will not flex their arms and wrists away from the neutral position. Properly set up, the user's workstation office equipment is positioned so that they will remain upright, with spine aligned and arms properly rested throughout the duration of the workday. From the chair to the desk to the office equipment that the user interacts with, pretty much all aspects of a worker's environment can be improved through good ergonomic design, which will keep the body aligned to a neutral position, minimizing strain throughout the user's body. Most anyone who works in an office-type environment can testify of the issues related to a poorly ergonomically designed workstation, issues such as carpal tunnel syndrome, tendonitis, sprains, strains, and tears. Decreasing physical risks is just one of the many benefits of a well-designed area. A well-designed ergonomic workstation offers increased focus and productivity, higher musculoskeletal health, and a decrease in risk for spine and extremity disorders. In an ergonomically oriented workstation, the user is often found to be more focused and more productive. While there are many reasons for this, the leading causes seem to be fewer stresses and strains and a higher output over time. According to a research review in New England, the mental health of an employee is associated with, quote, the physical and psychological conditions of work, end quote, indicating that a better physical environment allows for improved cognitive levels. An ergonomic situation allows for the user to focus less on the environment around them and instead focus on the task at hand, leading to higher productivity. One could perhaps attribute this increased focus to the effects ergonomics has upon the spine and the extremities. The effects of proper ergonomic design on the human spine is perhaps the most noteworthy of all the benefits. It certainly has the most written about it. The spinal column is notoriously fragile, and any kind of sustained strain has the potential to cause lasting damage. As such, the best practice is to maintain proper posture, with a straight S-shape throughout in a neutral position. Any ergonomic system should be built around this central concept, to keep the spine aligned as such. Doing so will keep the connective tissue healthy and will prevent lasting structural damage to the spinal discs and the tendons and nerves within. Quote, if your posture isn't optimal, your muscles will have to work harder to keep you upright and balanced. Some muscles will become tight and inflexible, others will be inhibited, end quote. An improperly maintained spine inflicts extra wear and tear on the joints and ligaments, increases the risk of accidents, and makes some of the body's organs have to work harder to keep up the same output. Contrarily, an aligned spine upheld by proper ergonomic devices minimizes wear and tear, reduces strain, and keeps organs efficient. The effects of ergonomic design on the spine are perhaps the most important of all benefits conferred, but they are not the only benefits. In addition to the spine, ergonomics offers a positive effect on the outer extremities, a Cochrane Review study found that as the use of computers in office situations rose over the past years, the amount of work-related musculoskeletal disorders increased along with it. The same review found that an increased ergonomic situation in these types of office environments may offer a significant reduction in these types of disorders. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, an increase in ergonomic factors decreases the likelihood of musculoskeletal disorders such as arthritis, carpal tunnel syndrome, and torn rotator cuffs or ACLs. This is all in addition to the benefits gained from lower fatigue and strain caused by insufficiently supported extremities. Overall, a well-designed ergonomic workstation offers many benefits for those who use them, including but not limited to increased focus and productivity, higher musculoskeletal health, and a decrease in risk for spine and extremity musculoskeletal disorders. Ergonomic systems for office-type environments are vital for the health and well-being of those who use them. Whether you work in a big office building or work from home at your home desk, implementing these factors in the furniture and equipment of a desk space environment yields the benefits of boosted productivity, increased focus and motivation, and prevention of structural damage to the body. Quote, because of the high number of American employees having sedentary jobs, learning about using proper ergonomic technique and equipment is essential for a higher productivity and reduced occupational injuries. End quote. So if you're like me, and you find yourself sitting in front of a computer screen for extended periods of time, and you find yourself blinking at the world around you whenever you look up, I recommend that you implement some of these systems, make your work more enjoyable, help your body help you, sit up straight, and get to work. What's up gamers? 
Thanks for stopping by and sticking around. I initially made this project for a university class and was going to keep it between my professor and I, but decided to go ahead and publish it to YouTube anyway. If you want to take a look at some of the sources I cited, I've included a link to my outline and bibliography in the description, so check that out if you feel like it. Either way, thanks for coming. Stay frosty.